Hello everyone, a warm welcome to you all. So in today's video, uh, we are going to discuss about support vector regression. So basically, support vector mission is a supervised learning technique uh, which can be used for both classification and regression, right? So the support vector mission which is used for a regression task is called as support vector regression, right? So you must be knowing about a uh, support vector mission uh, how it works for classification. So basically, if you see, it tries to find a hyperplane, right, in a in an n-dimensional space. <laughs> so when we talk about uh, classification, uh, let's assume that we have a data set with uh, two different classes. So let's assume these are the training points. So two labels we have, two different labels. <clears throat> so when this data set is given to a support vector classifier, so basically, this support vector classifier is going to find uh, the marginal lines by identifying the support vectors, right? The support vectors are nothing but they are the edge points, right? In both the classes. So it, try, it tries to find the support vectors and draws or uh, to, uh, gives two marginal lines, right? And finally, it gives a hyperplane. So it classifies two different points, right? And it tries to find a hyperplane to classify these points, right? By giving these two marginal lines. And these two marginal lines will be drawn based on the support vectors, right? <clears throat> so if you see the optimal hyperplane in terms of a support vector classifier is a plane which has maximum marginal distance. So these are the marginal lines. So when you see whichever line, uh, whichever marginal line gives the maximum distance, right? So that hyperplane is considered as the optimal hyperplane in terms of SVC, right? Uh, that support vector classifier. So now in terms of support vector regressor, so where basically regression is nothing but you're going to uh, predict continuous data, right? How it works? in terms of regression, okay? So if you see, this regressor tries to find a hyperplane a hyperplane such that most of the training points are inside the marginal lines. So if you see, in SVC, this is just opposite, right? We try to find a hyperplane which uh, classifies these points. So there should be maximum distance between the points and the plane. But in terms of regressor, here the regressor finds a hyperplane which uh, consists most of the training points or which covers most of the training points. So let's say if... <coughs> Let's say we have a data set. So assume this is our data set. <clears throat> okay. So basically this is our continue, uh, you know, we need to predict a continuous value here. So if this data set is given to a support vector regressor, so it tries to give a marginal lines which covers the maximum data points. Let's assume that there's one marginal line here. There's one marginal line here. So these parallel, these will be parallel to each other, right? It's 
last date. Right? In this case, in uh, support vector regression, if you see, it tries to find uh, the marginal lines which covers most of the training points. So these are the training points, right? It covers most of the training points and it gives a hyperplane. Okay, so this is formed with the equation y is equal to mx plus c. Okay, and it does the prediction. Okay, so basically, if you see in terms of classifier, we try to minimize the error, right? Where we will see the uh, data points or the training points which comes within the marginal line, right? But in terms of support vector regressor, if you see, it tries to cover most of the training points within this margin, marginal line, marginal lines, right? So what are these points there? The points which are outside these marginal line, they are called as slack variables. So these are all called as the slack variables and this as well. Okay. So basically the support vector regressor is not going to bother about these data points, which, which is not covered here, right? So how the error is calculated in terms of linear regression, if you see, it takes the difference between the uh, actual uh, training points and the prediction, right? So if you see, it takes the error by calculating the distance between the training points with the hyperplane. But in case of support vector regressor, it takes these slack variables, right? It calculates a mark, the distance between these points and the marginal lines. This is calculated as the error. Okay, so we try to reduce these errors by covering most of the data points within these marginal lines. Right, so these margins are called as the tolerance level. Okay, so you can set this, right, and find out how, uh, which is the optimal hyperplane. So let's say in this case, you have a hyperplane like this, but assume that we have one more, you know, let's assume we have a plane something like this. If I try to have another plane, so assume this is the other plane, okay? So if you see which uh, marginal line covers most of the data points, whether this red one or whether the, uh, this mirror. So you can see most of the training points are covered between these marginal lines and not the blue one, right? So this will not be considered. The blue one, you know, whichever has the hyperplane will not be considered as the optimal hyperplane. So for this data, this will be the optimal hyperplane because this contains most of the training points. Okay? So this is how the support vector regressor works okay, in the training points. Okay, so this is called as the epsilon tube. This is called as the tube, which refers to the width of the, so epsilon is nothing but it's, so this is, this we refer as tube. Okay, so those, this width of the tube is called as epsilon. So the hyperplane which has maximum number of training points within these marginal lines, they are called as the <clears throat> optimal hyperplane. Okay. Thank you.